Welcome to part 6 on finding volumes of solids of revolution. Remember Chipmunk? Last time he asked a good question. Can we always solve these problems using both the disk and the shell methods? I answered no. To show you why, let's take a look at example 5. We're going to look at the region bounded by this third degree polynomial, the vertical line x equal 2 and the x-axis. All we're going to do is set up integrals that give the volumes of the solids generated when we revolve the region three different ways. In all these problems, the first thing we have to do is draw the graph. And that's the reason I did a tutorial on graphs of polynomials. This was the third degree polynomial that I used in that example. I'll just go right to the region. Here's a picture of it. We have to decide what is the best way to slice this region. At this point, it doesn't even matter which way we're going to revolve it. We're either going to slice it vertically or horizontally. I'm going to do it the wrong way first, okay? This is the wrong way, slicing it horizontally. Let's see why it does not work. Here's a horizontal slice. What is the thickness? It's a little change in y, dy. And we know by now that means our integral is going to be in terms of y. No more x's. These two points have the same y coordinate. And when we go to label the x coordinates, we have to have x in terms of y. Look at the cubic. There's no way we can solve for x in terms of y, right? So that means we just can't do it that way. That's the end of that. But this example also illustrates another scenario where these slices are not practical. So let's keep slicing upwards until we get here. See that stripe with the blue endpoints? Whenever we have to go from the same curve to the same curve, that is bad news. It's going to be hard to do. Now we know. It doesn't matter how we revolve it. It has to be vertical slices. So let's draw a vertical slice. Its thickness is dx. The next step is to label the endpoints of the slice. They have the same, what coordinate? The x, right? So let's write that down. For the point on the polynomial, the y-coordinate is that polynomial. And the point on the bottom, y is 0. Now we can solve our three problems. Part A says, revolve the region about the x-axis. So when this vertical strip goes around the x-axis, we get a disk. The volume of this disk is pi radius squared times its thickness. What's the radius? It's just the big y coordinate, right? So it's the polynomial. And the thickness is dx. The total volume is the sum of all these disks. Where do we start these vertical slices? When x is 0, and we keep moving until x is 2. So those are the limits of integration. Ready for part b? Part b says revolve the region about the y-axis. When the vertical strip goes around the y-axis, we get a shell. The volume of this shell is 2 pi r, just the circumference because it's hollow inside, 
times the height times the thickness. The radius is x. The height is the big y coordinate. And the thickness is dx. The total volume is the sum of all these. And the vertical slices start when x is 0 and stop when x is 2. OK, last part, part C. This is interesting. It says revolve about the vertical line x equal to 3. So what do we get when we revolve that slice around x equal to 3? That's right, another shell. Once again, the volume of the shell is 2 pi radius times its height times its thickness. Can you figure out what the radius is? I'll let you think about that. Good job. It's 3 minus x. The height, once again, is just the big y coordinate. And the thickness is dx. The total volume of the solid will be the sum of all these as x goes from 0 to 2. All done. These prompts are really fun, aren't they? Hope you enjoyed it. See you some other time. Bye.